An article in the Japan Times says Japanese interpreters are struggling to make sense of Trumpese when translating President Trump. Chikako Suruta, who works as an interpreter for CNN, ABC, and CBS, says he rarely speaks logically and he only emphasizes one side of things as if it were true, the absolute truth. There are, uh, there are lots of moments when I suspected his assertions were factually dubious. Well, it sounds like Chicago has less of a translation problem with Trump and more of a political one. Retired interpreter Tomiko Torikai says it's not an interpreter's job to beautify or upgrade a politician's speech. Quote, if Trump is not making sense, you don't get to make sense either. If his language is coarse, that's the way you translate him, she said. She seems to be no fan of Trump either, but the American media should heed her advice because they often take it upon themselves to interpret Trump and in doing so basically make things up. They did it several times in the past few days. When Trump tweeted this attack on specific media organizations, newspapers decried Trump's attack on the First Amendment, but there was no attack on free speech. They made that up. Then when Trump spoke about Sweden's immigration problems at a rally, the press claimed he made up a terrorist attack. Again, he mentioned no attack. They made that up. Time and time again, the mainstream media chooses to interpret for us what the president is actually saying. Fake news is not about facts. It's about filters. The news media filters the facts, rearranges them to say what they want, and then demands we discuss their narrative on their terms. It's not working. Almost nobody believes them anymore. That's the real danger to a free press. Tim, what did you think of these uh, Japanese interpreters in the story? Well, let's be real honest here. Who are they working for? Not Fox News, CNN, ABC, CBS. That's right, yes. The center of fake news. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know if you guys have Japanese interpreters. We here, don't, don't care about the Japanese. <laughs> no. Forget the Japanese here. But fake news at all these other, especially CNN. Yes. So uh, obviously they're going to be biased. Yeah. Well, do you think, I mean, I think that, uh, you know, they, they, just like the, the interpreter, that second interpreter, she gave a pretty good advice uh, that the, the press should probably use, right? The American press. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, you have to deal with what's given you instead of just making up the story, and that's exactly what the first interpreter is doing here. Yes. Uh, Mine, Stephen, news. this has been, I mean, I use those two examples. It's been happening, but it's been happening, it was happening during the campaign. They go ahead and they create their own narrative, yes or no? The media? Yes. Yes, definitely. This yeah. is, uh, this, uh, they might as well be doing it in Japanese because they're not, they're not reporting <laughs> anything that's happening in front of them. Yeah. And the, the, the Swedish thing was a prime example. All I heard about, I just heard about it, saw it on Twitter and everything, yeah. the terror attack, terror attack, terror attack, and then when I went and finally looked, at the transcript, I was like, okay, there's no terror attack there. No, they've been making this up forever. This is, and I think they're going to keep doing it. They're part of this bulldozer that's pushing people, Tom. They're, the media is part of the bulldozer that's pushing people like me towards Trump. Yep. And the, the more they ranted about his press conference the other day, I got to the point where I wanted to hug him. I've never wanted to be <laughs> near him before. I was willing to risk. I was willing to risk the Secret Service pouncing on me because the more they lied about him for the next 24 hours, I just come here, you rascal. Yeah. I just want to see if that heralds. Would you go to a rally? though would you like those rallies they seem like a lot of fun don't I they I had not been to one and I I'm pretty sure I'll be phone banking for him by next weekend <laughs> <laughs> okay. Kirsten you're probably similar I mean probably during the campaign I think you were uh, you probably weren't a big Trump yeah, supporter yeah, as, as I, I remember a, yeah right no I wasn't a big Trump fan he wasn't my my guy but yeah. you know I'm a conservative and so I support the Republican Party yeah. Um, but yeah I, I agree with you and also just I, I wish that you know I wish that he would communicate a little bit more elegantly so sometimes I wish right because I, I wish that he would we would have Trump as he's speaking and then like a Trump interpreter right like himself interpreting himself <laughs> yeah. to be like this is what I meant by that yeah. like this is what all the news stories are going to say tomorrow this is what I meant by that well, yeah, so we could avoid all of this and actually talk about the real issues rather than the whole next news day being taken up by by the media destroying him for one comment it's ridiculous frankly and it's a disservice to the American people you make a good point you know who has one of those uh, interpreters the Pope Remember yeah. Pope, the Pope's yeah. interpreter? Yes. He followed him around everywhere. People loved him because he immediately, the Pope would say something, and then he would immediately go out and say, he didn't really mean that. He meant something else. <laughs> See, that's what he needs. Our, our Donald Trump needs to have like, a Pope-like translator. That's yeah. a reverse hype man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. Exactly. It's like a, I don't know what a reverse of a hype man is. <laughs> Joe, yes. the, uh, you know, so what if they're having trouble translating him? He's talking to America. I mean, he's so yeah. American Trump. Let me tell you something. I'm not surprised the Japanese were having trouble with this because 
I've watched a lot of Godzilla movies, and the translations don't always line up with the way the mouths are moving. So <laughs> they it, don't. It, it, Why it, don't they? Be, it just seems like there's not the same length of words there. Yeah. Um, I, call me traditionalist, but I think the, the best way to interpret Donald Trump is through the medium of modern dance. I feel like that interpretive dance really gets his point across. We need to get, remember Bloomberg's sign language interpreter? Yes. She was like popping and locking. She was awesome. Oh, they're amazing. The, the sign they, language. I didn't realize oh, they yeah, acted out. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Um, because Trump certainly couldn't do his own sign language because with the tiny hands, people would just be saying, speak up. <laughs> speak, we're not able to hear with your tiny hands. <laughs> this, is, this is another media trick to be serious at. Um, to, if you want to make someone look stupid when you do a transcript, you leave in all the ums and ahs and things that you say in a normal conversation, yeah. which if you, if you are, have an interest in making the person look intelligent, you edit those out. But if you want to make them look stupid, you leave those in. Same as if someone says something and you don't say, Tom Shalhoub said, you say, Tom Shalhoub claimed. Yeah. So it makes it sound like something shady Oh, going yes, on. they do that all the time. Yeah. You're right. But Trump, Trump does have an odd circular way of speaking about things. But to say he's not a good communicator, you're not paying attention. Because his message is him. Yeah. He communicates himself very well. People are picking up the message. Yep. Yeah, and he knows who he's talking to. That's no, the thing. That's what I say to my friends, my hysterical say. friends in Manhattan. I always sit, turn and I say, he's not talking to you. Right. He, knows, yeah. he doesn't have your vote anyway. Okay, coming up.